and financially. So we just got something weird going on here. All right, I'm trying to <laughs> match up both my business and my personal page. So again, I'm Camille Ico. I hope that you are living the life that you love spiritually, mentally, physically, and financially. So we are on day nine, which is also our final day of the book discussion. Are all your pieces in place by Glenza Phelan? And I hope that you guys have been enjoying this and really been getting um, some worthy information, some information that you can apply into your life and see some benefit, see some growth going on. So welcome as you guys are coming on. Make sure you drop a one below to let me know you're catching this live and that you're here with me. Drop a two if you're going to be catching this on replay. All right, and feel free to let me know where you're chiming in from if you want to. So hey, what's going on, Wilbert? All right, so day nine, we are talking about the physical you. <laughs> How many of you all neglect some key parts like your diet or the exercise portion uh, of the physical you? I would say many of us do because we are in a world of convenience. We're in the world of let's put it in the microwave and put it on for a few minutes and let's eat it or go to the fast food restaurant because it's quick and it's convenient. However, we don't really realize, or some of us do realize, we just choose to ignore the fact how much our physical us has to do with the spiritual, with the mental, with the vibrational selves that we have talked about. So just to catch some of you guys up, good morning, good morning, just to catch some of you all up, if you have not been following along with the book discussion, are all your pieces in place are really talking about how to get to a place where you are balanced in every aspect of your life, okay? How you're balanced mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, vibrationally, and how do we nourish each part of that self? So we got Baton Rouge in the house, Las Vegas, what's going on, Gerald? So how we need to nourish each one of ourselves, each part of who we are, because oftentimes we can get caught up on one area of self, but we neglect the other area of self. And so we become in balance. We become unhappy. We're not full of joy. We are not experiencing the happiness that we're supposed to have, right? So with, okay, my business page has got to catch up here. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. So we need to make sure that we are truly taking the time to nourish every aspect of who we are, every aspect of who God created us to be so that we truly can live our best life. And it's not just a hashtag that we're putting out there, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into it. If you are following along or the, in the book or you're going to decide to purchase the book, um, this is chapter nine in the book and it starts on page 153 really talking about, hey, what's going on now, now how to nourish the physical body. So of course, we're gonna eat some physical food for the physical body. But Glenda Phelan, the author of the book, really brings up some key points. So on today, I'm gonna be reading a lot of stats and, and just the, a lot of what she has actually written in the book versus expounding a lot on my thoughts on today, all right? So there was a quote um, by Hippocrates and it said let your food be your medicine and medicine be your food and then Thomas Edison the light bulb inventing visionary said the doctor of the future will give no medicines but will interest his patients in the care of the human frame in diet and in the causes of disease all right and so uh, Glenda talks a lot about the Chinese culture in um, let's see here it okay so on my business page it is ended so I will post it up there okay but in the Chinese culture she she talks a lot about uh, in fact we're gonna talk about a study that she did but she talks a lot about how the the Chinese culture in ancient China should I say the primary purpose of food was to maintain health and disease and so when they actually had doctors the doctors were responsible for keeping the families healthy. And if the family did not keep, or if the doctors did not keep the family healthy, then they were actually not paid. 
And so now we can look at it in today's world, in today's society, where we are actually rewarding doctors to kind of just pacify our sicknesses, right? And so it says here, doctors were retained to keep families healthy. If their efforts failed and a patient became ill, the doctor was held personally accountable and wasn't paid. So today we reward doctors by paying them when we get sick, right? A lot of what we experience now is sick care. It's not really health care. The doctors aren't really telling us what we need to eat in order to be healthy. And a lot of the diseases that we have, as you guys have heard me say, if you get all my lives, that they are preventable, that we can put things into our system. We can eat our way to good health, right? So that's really what we're going to be talking about on today is really what does it mean when we eat certain foods? What are the certain foods that we need to be eating so that we can stop the inflammation in our body, so that we can stop the you know, the heart disease, that we can stop the, the, the kidney disease, the liver disease, and all of these diseases that we are suffering from unnecessarily. Because if we would just be wiser about what it is that we are doing with our physical self, we will understand that not only will our physical self improve, but we will have a better state spiritually, mentally, vibrationally, and emotionally. One of my pages out of my book fell. Let me grab that. <laughs> okay, so she goes on to say that nature has a secret. Essentially, with our food, right, that we should be eating our food in its natural state. So unlike, you know, going to eat a french fry, you should actually eat the potato in its natural state because once you break it down, you're putting it in the grease, you're frying it, you're losing all of the benefits. So yes, it is a potato, but no, you should not be eating it, right? And so, you know, every now and then I do, I must admit, get me a little potato here and there. And we have to be honest with ourselves about what it is that we're putting in our system and then saying, okay, you know, if I know that I'm eating this all the time, or I know that I'm having this issue in my body it's possibly because of the food that I am eating and so if you want to stop some of the disease you want to stop some of the discomfort you want to prevent some of these things from going on then think about what you're eating and she says the nature secret is in the seed so we should be eating the apples we should be eating the fruits we should be eating the foods in its natural state okay she said let me reiterate only nature can make food and the secret is the seed. The little seed has the ability to burrow in the dirt and change into an edible form. Everything that we are comes from the, the earth, the ground, the dirt, right? We, we are literally made of that. So the earth has everything that we need. And when we eat of it, then our body is then replenished. But this, the thing about the seed is this. The seed is able to go into the ground and come up with all of the nutrients and all of the vitamins that we need and so we can try and you know if we just eat iron or potassium right a lot of times those things are in forms that our bodies can't take but when we eat of the fruit when we eat of the vegetables that are of the seed of the ground then we are getting everything that we need and the seed has this way of being able to bring out the foods and and the minerals and the vitamins that we need isn't that amazing? Like, isn't it amazing how God created everything and he had a purpose and he had a plan and it's there for you and it's there for me. So the diseases that you might be personally be going through or the diseases that you have seen your parents suffer with or family members, you don't have to go through that if you decide to make wiser decisions. A lot of cancer, a lot of of you know these things that are plaguing our nation that are plaguing our world are preventable so what are we going to do about it are we going to continue to just allow people to make money from us so that they can continue to disease us or are we going to make smarter choices and say you know what i'm going to be more mindful about what i put in my body and I know for me personally, I've been making some shifts and saying, okay, I'm not going to just poison my body because I don't want to have high cholesterol. I don't want to have high blood pressure. I don't want to have dementia. I don't want to have Alzheimer's. I don't want to have a stroke. I don't want to have a heart attack. I don't want to have open heart surgery. And so if I don't want these things, then I have to begin to tell myself I want good health. And then I have to put actions behind that, right? So once we create the thoughts that we want in our mind, then we have to begin to act 
act on it because otherwise it's just a thought and a thought without any action is just a dream, okay? And we don't wanna be dreamers this entire time. We wanna be able to make things happen because you know you can have some of the best plans, you can have some of the best goals, but if your physical condition is whack, if you are just completely you know, just out of who you are, you're always in pain, you just wanna lay in the bed, then what goals are you truly going to be able to accomplish? So this is why we have to take better care of our physical self so that we can make a greater impact in the lives of others and truly fulfill what it is that we have been put here to do, all right? So we can no longer say, well, you know what, I'm just gonna eat my fried chicken every day and I'm gonna eat this every day and all this grease and all this other stuff and put all my salt on my food. Because why? Because literally we are killing ourselves and you may not see it right now, but it is gonna manifest. And we're gonna talk more about how, you know, that really plays an effect in, in your immune system and your mental state. But we'll come to that because I don't want to jump ahead of myself, okay? So eat your food as nature grew it. We've kind of talked about that. So if you want to go into more detail, then you read it. But read the book, that is. All right. <clears throat> so one thing I do want to touch on is milk. We are the only species that drinks milk after being weaned and we drink it from another animal. And so we've been told, okay, well, you need it for the calcium and but that that's not necessarily true because we can get calcium from foods of the earth from the seed that we were talking about right and so here for those of you who might kid ha, might have kids or around kids or planning to have kids this is something that you might want to take note of okay pesticides parasites and drugs given to the cows are transmitted through the milk and even for ourselves right and for me personally i know that i've switched over to almond milk but anyway and even that's got some issues. Look, all of our food has issues, but we can still be wiser about some of the cho choices we make. All right, so large protein molecules can overburden little bodies and cause runny noses, respiratory problems, allergies, ear aches, and mucus problems, and digestive disorders. So when we are giving our children milk, okay, just give them a cup of milk, and then we wonder why they have these runny noses. We wonder why they are developing these diseases and these issues in their bodies. It is because that we are giving them things that aren't supposed to be there. They're not made to go into the body, okay? And so, again, when we come and we look at it, we go to the doctor, and the doctor's like, you've got this issue or this problem. It didn't just happen overnight. A lot of people have been drinking milk since they were babies, and it is just grown into a bigger issue but we never dealt with it we never made any different choices and so we wondering why why do i have this suddenly it's not suddenly baby it's been going on in your body it's just now manifesting okay so here is the study that i was talking about initially that um it was a study that was done in china it was a very intensive study and i just want to read some of the bullet points okay the most comprehensive study ever undertaken on the relationship between diet and disease was done several years ago in China. 6,500 Chinese contributed 167 facts about their diet and other health habits. This was an exacting labor intensive study. Y'all know China is probably like the only place that could pull this off, right? Because they are just very detailed and they're about their business. So anyway, some of the tantalizing, tantalizing findings are obesity is related more to what people eat than how much. Obesity is related more to what people eat than how much they eat. So, you know, sometimes people can get upset like that. Small girl, she just eats whatever she wants to. She eats, eats however much she wants. She eats a lot, but it's not about how much, it's about what. So while you're filling yourself with all those sugars and all of those pastries and all of those unhealthy things and you may only eat a little bit of it that's causing you to have fat increased in your body whereas somebody else can eat something more healthy they can eat a lot more of it and you're like well why you just just keep eating and keep eating and you don't gain anything it's because obesity is not about what or how much should i say <laughs> but it's about what you are eating what are you putting in your mouth what did you have for lunch today what do you plan to have for lunch today? And maybe you're like nothing. We're gonna talk about that too. Are you starving your body? The next point, the Chinese eat only a third of the amount of fat, of the fat Americans do, while eating twice the carbohydrates. 
they consume 10 to 15 percent of their calories from fat the body readily stores fat but expends a large larger proportion of carbohydrates consumed as energy and there's a misconception that carbohydrates only come from breads and things you there are actually healthy carbohydrates that are in the food that is grown in the ground that we are supposed to be eating and so there's a difference between your bad carbohydrates and your good your bad fats and your good okay the next point eating a lot of protein especially animal protein is also linked to chronic disease eating a lot of animal protein is linked to chronic disease let me say that again eating a lot of animal protein is linked to chronic disease do you all know some people with some chronic diseases okay americans consume a third more protein than chinese do 70 percent of americans can American protein comes from animals, while only 7% of Chinese protein does. Those Chinese who eat the most protein also have the highest rate of diseases of affluence, such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes. Guys, do you see the relationship that when we are eating all of this animal protein and we're eating it all the time and we're eating consistently that we end up with more disease heart disease cancer and diabetes think about what it is that you're putting into your system okay now if you're eating a protein that's more plant-based it's easier to digest um, and, and that is way better for you okay and then the last point on this study is that dairy calcium isn't needed to prevent osteoporosis did y'all know that? Dairy calcium is not needed to prevent osteoporosis. Most Chinese consume no dairy products, but instead get their calcium from vegetables. So you can get calcium from vegetables. I can get calcium from vegetables and we don't need to drink the cow's milk, which has all of the pesticides and all of the extra stuff that we don't need that is causing disease and problems and mucus. And mucus is one of the biggest causes of disease in the body. And we are doing that to ourselves and our children from a very early age. And that is fueling the, the doctors because now they always have somebody sick to take care of, which means their check is always going to be big. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against doctors. Doctors have their place. However, I do believe that we should take a better look at how our diet and our nutrition plays a role in making sure that we stay healthy so that it's truly health care and not sick care. All right? So does taste matter? Absolutely taste matter, but not in the way that we might think. Like, oh, it don't taste good to me. Ugh, oh, my gosh. Okay? Right? But it talks about that there are five different tastes. Sweet bitter, salty, spicy, and sour. And if this is your first time following all, along with me, we're on All Your Pieces in Place by Glenda Phylum. And you guys can look up these stats and statistics, and I'm sure you're going to be able to find it, okay? Now, when you get in the habit of eating all five tastes at a meal, you find that cravings, which indicate chemical imbalances, are decreased. If you guys have cravings, it's typically because your chemical in, you, you have a chemical imbalance going on in your body. And so you need to get that in check. And so the more that you have a balanced meal that in, uh, incorporates all of the different tastes, the less you're going to have that chemical imbalance. In fact, you can rectify that issue. So you're not craving pickles and ice cream and all types of random stuff, okay? Or even, you know, there's people who actually eat glue. And there's that one show, can't think of the name of it. So if you know it, drop it below. But, um, and guys, if this is making any sense, drop some hearts, some likes, some loves. Don't just... Don't just be there, okay? Talk to me, interact with me. Um, but, you know, there, there's people who eat glue, and there's people, there was one episode, I just actually heard the, the commercial, whatever it was on, like a, a little part of it. But the person was actually eating fecal matter. Like, they would go on the internet, and they would get people to meet, go to the hotel, use the bathroom. So they would pay them to go to the hotel, use the bathroom, and then leave. And the person would come behind them and eat their fecal matter. That is disgusting. So if you want to talk about, let's make sure that we get our bodies in check so we don't end up on some crazy things like people would eat comet right especially sometimes when you're pregnant your your hormones are completely out of whack right 
And so you start eating Comet, and I forgot what that disease is called. Listen, I'm not a, a medical professional, right? But all of these things do happen. Or you have people who they are eating a bunch of ice. Typically, that's anemia, right? They have a, a low iron count. And so your body literally is telling you what's wrong with you. But the, here's the key. The answer is in the food that we're eating. The earth has everything that we need, okay? So... When you get, let's see, boop, 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 sweet foods have a toning effect, bitter foods have a cleansing effect, salty foods have a softening effect, spicy foods have a perspiring effect, sour foods have an astringent effect. So some examples of that might be um, the lemon is sour, bitter, bitter greens, sweet lychee fruit, spicy jalapeno peppers, salty celery. So being able to incorporate the different tastes in your foods actually has great benefits for your overall health. The other thing, when we're thinking about the food that we're eating, put the rainbow on your plate. Don't have some doll plate where it's like rice, potatoes, cauliflower. It just one, it looks unappetizing. Okay. <laughs> but two, the colors of our food actually have something to do with our, with the benefits that the food is giving us and directly impacting um, the benefits that we get, okay? So research shows that the very pigment pigments that give fruits and vegetables their vibrant colors are disease fighters. Hey, 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 what's going on? All right, hello everyone who's joining in. So uh, there's a few people hopping on the bandwagon here. So are all your pieces in place by Glenda Filan? That is what we are are reading okay so let's go here research shows that the very pigments that give fruits and vegetables their vibrant colors are disease fighters these substances that give fruits and vegetables their hues are powerful phyto plant chemicals all right so let me go through i'm gonna run down and i'm gonna tell you all what some of the benefits are for each of the colors of the food that we eat and this is so important it is so important okay red foods contain nutrients so thanks for everyone who's hopping on feel free to share like heart drop a fire do something let me know you're there engage in conversation let me know it's new information that you're learning or helpful information that you are going to apply to your life because it's one thing to hop on this live and watch me but we if we don't do anything about it then it means nothing <laughs> right so um knowledge is power if you use it otherwise it doesn't mean much so red foods contain nutrients that nourish the heart muscle strengthening the heart itself so when you eat your red foods it's actually helping your heart okay and it's strengthening the heart itself white foods nourish the lungs which provide oxygen to every living cell green foods get their verdant color from chlorophyll which has the ability to block the action of degenerating substances green foods nourish the liver black foods nourish and strengthen the kidneys and their related organs yellow foods nourish the spleen and aid digestion so when you're thinking about okay what am i having for breakfast what am i having for lunch what am i having for dinner you can literally pick taste you can pick colors of foods that are going to help not only help you be healthy but your family as well right because we already have talked about by the foods that we eat and the things that we think we can actually transform dna and when we transform dna that is then what is passed on to children and generation after generation after generation and what causes things to be seemingly a generational curse or a generational disease but if you decide today that hey this stops with me that this isn't going to go any further it is absolutely possible and your children don't have to experience having the heart disease and having heart attacks and strokes and all of the other things that they tell us we are going to have just because the people before us had it guys we can stop that now but it's going to take us to make some different decisions and decide to be conscious about what it is we are putting in our system. So the other thing that we should be thinking about making sure is in our um, 
what we eat, okay, is fiber. So fiber, it doesn't give you any energy, okay? It doesn't have any nutrients, but this is what fiber does for you. You can always count on fiber to sop up the mess you've made inside your body by speeding the elimination of harmful body waste. So fiber helps to go inside the body and say, okay, you need this, you don't need this. You need this, you don't need that. And fiber will actually been, begin to cleanse out the things that does, doesn't need to be there. So fiber stim, simultaneously keeps your cholesterol level down, reduces your fat intake, and helps you to lose weight. So there is actually studies that were done that says if you increase your fiber intake, that you can actually lose more weight than if you cut your calorie count. Yes, so it's not always necessarily about the calories that you are intaking, whether it's more or less, but it is about the amount of fiber that you also have in your system. And fiber can help you not only to lose weight, but maintain the weight that you desire. So this is about, you know, also weight management, guys. All right, it's not always about I want to lose weight or I want to gain weight. Sometimes we just need to manage a good, good weight. And the study that she talks about here in the book on one page 162, she says that they, the people who had the 10.5 grams of fiber for every thousand daily calories were less likely to be overweight or gain weight during the 10 year period of the study. So for 10 years, they were able to manage a healthy weight simply by increasing the fiber in their in their food okay so now salt sugar fat guys there are things of the earth that has salt sugar and fat in it but we have to do the ones that are healthy for us not these synthetic not these overly processed foods right so I'm not even gonna talk a whole lot about that because we know we know that we shouldn't take the salt shaker and douse it on our food right we know that we shouldn't take the sugar bowl and just sprinkle it on everywhere this increases disease after disease after disease so if you're doing it stop okay figure out what are the foods of the earth that you can put in that is gonna bring out the flavor and have good taste to it and of course we're gonna go out here and there okay fine but just don't make it a habit cook at home and learn how to cook properly but let's talk about fats real quick before we move on you know you have your bad fats that you're eating okay a lot of times that comes like animal fat the milk all of that is bad fat but we do have some essential fatty acids food fats provided by nature in avocados raw nuts and seeds and olive oils are crucial for proper growth and development they maintain healthy skin and hair and help lubricate, lubricate the joints. These fats help lower overall blood cholesterol levels. How many of you all know someone who suffers from high cholesterol, suffers from high blood pressure, suffers from a lot of these diseases? Drop one if you're saying, thank you so much, Wilbur. <laughs> all right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about, all right? We, and again, we're reading Are All Your Pieces in Place by Glenda Filan for those of you all who are on here. And like Wilbert said, drop a one if you're catching this live and drop a two if you're watching this on replay for me. All right, so the drink to your health. Here's something that I thought was interesting. First of all, if you don't know, most of your weight is fluid, okay? It is the liquid. So the surprising amount of fluids can be found in things you wouldn't consider wet. Your bones are 25% water. Lean muscle is 73% water. The body suffers when even mildly depleted of liquids. Losing 5% of your body fluid can cause fatigue, headaches, forgetfulness, confusion, and elevated heart rate. 5% 5% losing 5% of your body fluids guys this is why we should be drinking water throughout the day not just when you get thirsty but making it a part of your your daily regimen to drink water throughout the day because this could be the reason why you are tired why you don't feel well why you don't have any energy why you just want to lay in your bed because you don't have enough fluid in your body and a lot of times when we think that we are hungry we're actually thirsty and so then we start eating and eating and eating, but nothing is quenching or satisfying our hunger. And it's because you're not hungry, you're thirsty. 
And so you would find that you wouldn't eat as much if you would drink the appropriate amount that you need. And so if you're drinking the appropriate amount that you need, it's also helping to flush the toxins and you're not as hungry, which means that you won't be obese. And we all know that obesity has a huge role to play in, in particular, the United States, okay? So the amazing thing is that the body can actually send you signals though and slow down the body process so that you don't become over dehydrated, right? To a point where you need to then go be hospitalized. However, the problem is, is once your body is being slowed down in other areas, then it impacts you in other areas as well, okay? But here's a couple things that I want to point out. 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated. Lack of water is the number one trigger of daytime fatigue. Even mild dehydration will show the metabolism, will slow the metabolism as much as 3%. Drinking eight to 10 glasses of water a day could significantly ease joint and back pain for up to 80% of sufferers. How many of you all have joint pain, back pain, know someone who does, but you don't drink any water? or you don't drink enough. And when you say enough, it's eight to 10 glasses a day, but really there have been some other studies that suggest that you should be drinking half of your body weight in ounces. So if you weigh 100 pounds, then you need to be drinking 50 ounces of water on a daily basis, all right? So drink liquids daily because they carry nutrients to the cells. This is the importance of water. Did y'all know this, that water did this? Like some of y'all just like water is disgusting. It doesn't have any taste. Like my niece at dinner, you know, was like, oh my God, disgusting water. But water does a lot for you. It can carry the nutrients to the cells. It flushes toxins, form blood, and other body liquids. Keep soft skin and moist. Some of y'all got crusty skin. Drink some more water, okay. <laughs> Lubricate joints and organs and promote regularity. Some of y'all can't go to the bathroom for saving your life and you need to hit me up for some ISO tea. Okay. <laughs> and drink more water. I pretty much know when I'm going to go. I'm pretty regular and I know how much water I need to drink. I know how much tea I need to drink and when I need to drink it. So you know, and it feels good to not have to strain while you were on the toilet. Let's just be real, people. It is not comfortable sitting there for hours, what it may seem like hours, right? When it could just be a nice, smooth transaction. You're gone. It's done. It's over, right? Good job, Wilbur. Yes. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> great, Shabita. I'm glad this is helpful. All right. So... We're talking about how to nourish and exercise on today. So I don't know how long I've been on here, but I'm going to try and move through this. All right. So the next thing that um, Glenda begins to... <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> yep. Shameless plug. All right. Obesity has become a national health crisis and preventable cause, preventable cause of death. All right. We out here dying for no reason because we were just too lazy to do what we needed to do for ourselves, okay? Because lack of nutrition and unhealthy eating habits have led us down the road to obesity. Dieting has become a way of life that begins even in childhood, right? So as we're going through life and like you're starting this diet here and then you're starting this here and you're starting that and you're doing that, guys, if we would just make it a way of life, and here's another shameless plug that I'm about to do a challenge for you. And the challenge really isn't just about a 30 days of being able to do one thing. It's really about helping you to create a habit habit so that it becomes a lifestyle. So creating the habit of let's get up and let's put the right nutrients in our body. Let's exercise for 30 days and 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 let's you know really just be on top of our health. So if you're interested in that challenge, let me know and I'll get you some information, but I'm not going to go into it now. But here's the thing, we keep going on these fads and these trends and these special diets versus just making a part of our lifestyle. So then that way our body doesn't have to think it's going into starvation mode and it doesn't your body doesn't know the difference between a fast, between a diet, between whatever. So it actually begins to store the fat thinking that some trauma is about to happen to it. And then you wondering, okay, well, why is my body not releasing this fat that I'm working so hard to do? It's because your body is confused. It's like, what are you doing to me now? What's going to happen to me next? It's like your body is freaking out. 
And you can tell that because you can tell that you have issues going on in your body, whether you want to admit it or not, right? So, and if you didn't realize that, let me tell you, that's what's happening. Your body is freaking out. It doesn't know what you're going to do to it. It's trying to go into self preservation mode. It's like, I don't know what this chick is doing, right? I don't know if you're going to be eating a whole bunch of fried foods today and a bunch of greens tomorrow. And, you know, are you juicing one day and doing the fast food the next day? Your body is like, what is happening? I, I am not getting the nourishment that I need. And it is going berserks on you, okay? We don't want to do berserk body doesn't feel good, okay? All right, Shavita, I will message you. Okay, so where are we at here? So, meanwhile, the body must have fuel. So it robs the lean muscle on top of the hip. So, yeah, when, when your body and you're like putting your body through all of these different experiences versus making it a lifestyle, what's happening is, is like it starts taking from the areas that it doesn't need to be. So you're like, okay, well, I'm losing the weight, but I'm losing my muscle. It's because your body is thinking, okay, again, you're starving me or something traumatic is happening to me. And so now I'm gonna pull this weight from this muscle. And so you're losing the weight, but your muscles are no longer there. So it's important that even in your weight loss journeys and or your health management journeys that you do it the proper way so that your body can still live and thrive and not, you know, you're like, okay, well, I lost all of this weight. So if I lost all this weight, why am I still having these issues? It's because you didn't do it properly and your body is still freaking out. And it's like, it's taken some key nutrients from some key areas to try and supplement it because it has no idea what you're doing, okay? So treat your body right. And the body really is a miracle, all right? On page 68, 168 of the book, you know, it, she just talks about when we get the right foods that it gives us the right energy for us to attract the right things how many y'all been hangry before anybody been hangry i know y'all been hangry y'all know what that means when you're so hungry you become angry right and so now you're angry you got an attitude and now what are you putting off so this is where she really begins to tie in the importance of what you are eating and how it infects your, you vibrationally. And we know that what you put out in your energy is what you attract. So now I'm sitting here, I'm hangry. I'm angry and hungry at the same time, right? I got an attitude. And now, instead of being able to attract those things in my life that I want, I'm propelling people away from me because <laughs> my attitude's nasty, right? And you're talking to people and your, your responses are short. You know, you're, you're not showing love to people. You don't have joy. You don't have happiness because you're hangry. But if you would treat your body right and eat the way that you need to, then you wouldn't have to experience that, right? Yeah, okay, <laughs> Wilbert, you were hangry yesterday. Shereedy, I've been there too, right? I get so mad when I'm hungry. I just noticed it after. Yes. And next thing you know, especially when people have kids, it's like, sh sit down, shut up. Like every, everything is just like a very short fuse happening, right? Okay, or just like, what's your attitude problem? What what I do to you? Like, girl, nothing. I'm just hungry. <laughs> well, you can cut all of that because I don't want to be around you. All right. But here's what she says: Nature synergistic foods grown on rich soils have high electromagnetic vibrations because remember, everything is energy. So even our food, right? And our high energy foods, pre-packaged processed foods are low vibrational, low energy foods. So pay attention to what you eat. The next time you eat something greasy and heavy, how do you feel afterwards? You ready? You got the itis? You ready to just go lay down? You don't have any more energy? Your day is done? You just ready to go home? Versus eating some fruits and some vegetables and some high, you know, impact foods. How do you feel? You know, how do you feel? I'm pretty sure you're going to notice something different. You're going to have more energy. And when you have more energy, you're able to accomplish your goals. You're ready to go do more. Why? Because you can actually, you know, be sustained while you're doing it. You can maintain good high level energy levels versus being like, girl, I'm just so tired. I'm just going to go home and take a nap. It's six o'clock and I'm just ready to call it a night because this is my life and I'm old and I'm decrepit. No, baby, you're not. You're just not putting the right things in your body. Okay. And when you're not putting the right things in your body, this is reflected in your mental, your emotional, your vibrational, and your spiritual bodies, right? Because then you don't want to go to church. 
you don't read your Bible, like you don't want to do anything, right? You don't want to talk to anybody. You don't think about anything. You want to watch mindless TV. And so now you're watching the Ratchets, house, Housewives of whatever, right? <laughs> you're watching all these crime shows, thinking about how you kill people. And then some of these people really going out here and actually killing people. And we know some of the things that are going on, like the cop in Dallas who decides to go kill the man because she was in the wrong apartment. Come on, y'all. This is why we got to get it together. This is absolutely why we've got to get it together. What we're eating, what we're thinking, how we're feeling vibrationally, emotionally, spiritually. A lot of us out here, we crazy. We are absolutely crazy. There was a little kid that was missing. I think he was two or three years old, right? The, the mother makes up this man who she says they got in, in the car with. I'll have to post the, the link, the article. But she says they get in the, the car and he knocks her out. And four hours later, she comes to and her son is missing. So now they've got this manhunt looking for this child and looking for the man who was supposedly the one who knocked her out. And come to find out, the mother is responsible for killing her own child. This happens every day in the news. We are hearing crazier stuff just here in Cincinnati. There was a man down in Camp Washington. He goes and he slits the man's throat. Now, according to the news article that I read, they had no connection prior to. Like, they ran records. People said, you know, they didn't know each other. Just went and slit the man's throat. Like, walked in the establishment and slit his throat. What are you think? What are you eating? What are you? I just don't even know. Like, I don't even know how to explain or how I even feel about some of this stuff, right? Some of us, we just messed up. We are just messed up out here, okay? All right, so let's move on because I totally digressed there. But <laughs> in a sense, it wasn't a digression because that is when we don't take care of who we are and we don't take care of all of ourselves, that's what happens. Our imagination gets carried away, the feelings, the vibrations, all of that. Oh my gosh. We, we literally become crazy. We are literally in the psych wards. We, and if you need help, go get help, okay? So me saying that, don't let it stop you from going to get help. Please go to the psych ward and get help, please. Please go get some therapy, go get some counseling before you end up killing your family, your kids, and everybody else. Because some of y'all just, I don't know. I don't know. What's wrong with us? All right. So your physical self is an outer shell housing our inner selves. You know, we look at it because, you know, the physical is how we manifest and how we feel and what we see all of the time that we feel like it's the most important, but it's really what's going on inside that is is just then manifesting on the outside right so that anger that jealousy the envies those low vibrational things that are happening because of the food that we're eating are then manifesting on the outside and then we wonder you know why the the 70 year olds can look like oh my gosh she is still a bodybuilder at 70 years old what has she been doing because she's been eating something differently she's been thinking something differently she's been acting differently she's been sending off different vibrations meanwhile you're 30 and, and you look like you're 70 years old right but she's 70 and looks like she's 30 yes because your food can actually help in the regeneration process like your body was created to heal itself so when you when you get a scar right that scar actually or not a scar but let's say you get a cut <laughs> You're, even if you don't put anything on it, your skin will begin to regenerate. It will begin to close up. It will begin to heal. Why? Because that's what we were created to do. And it's when we put the wrong things in our bodies that, that we have an issue with our body healing property, properly. Okay? Hopefully you guys are following this because this stuff is good and it's going to help you if you are. But for those of you who just think I'm talking crazy, well... When they put gone too soon, you're going to know why. <laughs> but for real. All right. Now, let's go here. Doo -doo. So essentially, she just goes on to say that your physical self is so closely related to your mental and emotional parts that you risk your health by thinking angry or violent thoughts. And then she gives a bunch of different um, scenarios and different studies that have gone on. But literally, you know, by the foods that you eat, it can make you depressed. 
or it can make you happy. It can actually increase or decrease the ability of your immune system. All right. If this is helpful, you guys write some, drop some likes, some hearts, some something. Let me know you're there with me. Um, you know, it, it just talks about how laughter is able to boost it but a lot of times you know you can't laugh if you're too if your belly is so full that you then gotta take your your um button undone right and you just don't even feel like moving and, and you just feel like your whole life is about to end because you ate too much right or you know there was um when i went to haiti i was in the car and apparently i'd had too much salt in my diet but from the ride, it was a pretty extensive, hot, long ride. However, while riding, my feet began to swell up with water fluid that was in my feet. And it was literally like when I walked, you could see my foot go like this because there was too much fluid retention. And someone actually suffered from high blood pressure. So they had some, um, some of the pills where it releases the fluid out of your system. So I had to use those so here's the thing so for like a day i was out of commission because i needed to raise my feet up and i was so tired from getting up every two seconds to go pee because i had this issue going on in my body see you can't be as effective as you need to be in ministry in volunteering in your family's life on your job when you are not taking care of your body so here i am in haiti to do missions but i'm laid up in the bed for a day because i have to elevate my feet and i'm extremely tired because of the side effects of everything that is going on. Guys, we have to take better care of our bodies if we want to be more effective at reaching our goals and being able to achieve the things that we were meant to do while we are here on this earth, okay? So why not consciously influence your health by thinking positive thoughts and consciously feeling positive emotions? The mental, emotional, vibrational, and spiritual exercises you incorporate in your life can be beneficial to your physical self as well. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and hop into, and thanks for everybody who's been sticking on here with me. We're gonna go ahead and hop into the physical exercise. This portion isn't going to be long, but I am going to read a lot of some interesting facts as far as what the physical exercises actually do for you because there are a lot of people who are like you know what i don't want to do any physical exercise like you got me stuck like i don't want to get up i don't want to do anything and if you're overweight and you're obese you're just like i just want this fat to melt off of me like give me that magic pill but i'm gonna tell you there are so many benefits in getting up and getting active for just at least 30 minutes a day and it doesn't need to be something high um, high impact you can do something moderately intense and still get the same benefits from going in and doing some like great grandiose exercise just 30 minutes all right and so let me tell you if you do 30 minutes of moderate intensity activity three times a week it has been associated with at least 55 percent reduction in deaths from all causes and up to two and a half year increase in lifespan all right and, and let me even back it up a little further and read a quote that says millions of death each year can be attributed to physical inactivity. People are literally dying because you're lazy, because you won't get up. And not only that, but you know, it's a society that we're in. We spend a lot of time driving to work. Then we sit at our desk. Then we sit in traffic again. And then we sit when we get home so that we can watch TV, right? So you have to think about your lifestyle. Get up and walk around the house. You don't even have to go anywhere. You don't have to get a gym membership. You don't have to go to the parks like I do. Just walk around your house. You can get some steps in, get your little Fitbit or get your phone. Most smartphones have the health um, aspect to it now. You can count your steps just to make sure that you're at least getting in some exercise throughout the day, right? So here are a few ways exercise benefits the body. Let's talk about the brain. Exercise increases blood flow to the brain, heightening awareness and improving mental performance. It also prompts the brain to secrete endorphins, so the little messages in your brain to go, be happy, this is a good time. It's like when people give you recognition or give you a compliment, those, all right, those are the endorphins. Body chemicals that block pain, counter depression, and promote a sense of well-being. From exercise, you can get those benefits. How exercise can help your eyes. Researchers in Oregon have discovered that moderate exercise reduces pressure on the eyes, which may diminish the risk of glaucoma and eventually blindness. Ears. Exercisers who bicycled only 30 minutes twice a week 
not only strengthen their hearts, but also improve their hearing levels. The exercise may increase circulation in the inner ear that could enhance hearing capability. The lungs. Exercise increases oxygen metabolism, which increases endurance. Heart. 30 minutes of exercise every day will dramatically improve your cholesterol profile. When people start working out, it's not unusual to see 10 to 20% increase in HDL or good cholesterol and a 5% decrease in LDL or bad cholesterol. Okay, guys, I, I just, there, there's so many. Let me see here. Okay. Exercise causes the heart to be faster and harder in order su to supply enough blood and oxygen. Let's go to breast. Women under 40 who exercise at least four hours weekly are half as likely to develop breast cancer as those who didn't work out, revealed a University of Southern California study of 1,090 women. The pancreas is just one, in just one week, regular exercise lowered insulin resistance, a condition that can lead to diabetes. Um, guys, this is, I mean, the benefits of exercise is so key. And again, just 30 minutes and it doesn't have to be strenuous. All right, colon, according, good Otis, I'm glad this is helping. All right, according to Harvard University study of 121,000 female nurses, for every half hour women walk each day, their risk of colon cancer drops 10%. It's believed this may be because exercise helps boost immunity and speeds the transit of digested foods through the colon. Awesome, Wilbur. The reproductive system. Many studies show that moderate to vigorous aerobic exercise counters premenstrual, premenstrual miseries and PMS blues. Ladies, I know a lot of y'all. <laughs> y'all need to start exercising. Okay. It also promotes blood flow and increases endorphins, the brain chemicals that improve mood, reduce depression, and lessen pain. Guys, listen, when I'm going through, I'm upset about something, one of the best things for me to do is go get in the gym, go walk, go run, go do something because I absolutely feel a whole lot better once I'm there. And even sometimes I don't feel like it. I might sit in the parking lot for an hour before I get out, but I do it and I feel better afterwards, okay? So just get up and get it done, all right? In a national study, some of y'all really gonna like this one, Okay, and a national study of 8,000 women between the ages of 18 and 49 who exercise three times weekly, 40% reported greater sexual arousal, 31% had more sex, yeah, or had sex more often, and 25% climax more readily than their sedentary counterparts. The aphrodisiac's effects of exercise include higher levels of the lustful hormone testosterone and feel-good endorphins. Listen, some of y'all married couples in particular, and some of y'all in the church in particular, y'all marriages would be happy if you went and exercised. Your husbands would be happy. It would be a happier place because some of y'all are just grumpy. And I'll be like, why is your face so grumpy? This might be it. This might just be it. Go get you some exercise, see what happens. Anyway, bones. According to Stanford University, women in their 20s made significant gains in bone density and their spine after nine months of weight training. Exercise or weight training may increase bone density by six to 8% or more. To me, there's no greater feeling, yes, muscles immunity so it can boost your immunity guys really there are so many benefits to exercising what's the best exercise you know what you can do again you don't have to go and do some extremely strenuous exercises you can get some of really good benefits just by working some of the bigger muscles in your body but it doesn't have to be so hard right you can do jumping jacks you can do squats like these things are still going to allow you to see changes in your body if you do it consistently okay and what are the main mistakes when exercising doing too much yes you can exercise too much so you don't want to go in too hard because then it wears down the body People don't receive the full benefit of exercising because you do too little, all right? People do the wrong type of exercise by focusing on one type of exercise, such as weightlifting, which may not include aerobic benefits. All right, and let's see, what else? But anyway, 
make it a point that was it pretty much she just goes and talks about the the day and age that we're in and, and the lifestyles that we live that I'll, that may be a block to why we're not exercising but guys that is the physical you and how to nourish it physically and how to exercise the physical body now if you stayed on here for this whole thing i am sure that you at least heard something one thing that you can begin to implement into your life to make some healthier strides and i'm not expecting you know not even for me or for you that we're going to go and we're going to begin to implement all of this stuff tonight right and that life is going to change it is a process but get comfortable with enjoying the journey yeah sometimes you might screw up you might eat something you're not supposed to enjoy it and just move on <laughs> you know like okay the next moment is what you have so stop feeling guilty for that overabundance of chocolate that you had stop feeling guilty for those fries that you ate stop feeling bad you know a lot of us we have emotional eating disorders and and, and we need to check that okay so just know that the next moment you have another chance to make a better choice and to make sure that you are getting in at least 30 minutes of exercise if you can do it great daily great or at least three to five times a week okay so again if any of you guys are interested in joining my 30 33 challenge okay so that's 30 days committed to 30 minutes of exercising using three of my products making sure that you're getting the right nutrients and vitamins and detoxing your body um, let me know message me okay and again this is not about creating a challenge per se so that it's just a one-time thing but it's helping you to create a lifestyle so that you can be the healthiest you that you can possibly be so guys my name is Camille Iko, and I hope that you are living the life that you love thank you so much for joining in with me and I will talk to you guys later bye